Good afternoon, Off the Bench Sports family. We're here live, Southern University, and introducing from East Chicago, Indiana, 62170, Sean Woods. What's up, Coach? Welcome. What's up there, OTR? Oh, oh, OTB. I mean, it's OTB, good. OTB. It's good. Hey, it's awesome, man. Fantastic day. Um, I'm I'm honored that I'm I'm here on the campus of Southern University, and I got you know getting to watch you guys work out, um, do individuals. That was that was pretty cool. So, hey, it, it's it's I got a real big happy spot in my heart right now. Um, everybody knows that I love being in the gym. Um, especially when you can come in the gym and learn stuff and learn more about kids and, and enhance your knowledge of the game. So what what I always do is, hey, give us a little bio on Sean Woods. <laughs> well, Sean Woods, as you know, that surprised me. I am from East Chicago, Indiana. Uh, I know I do my homework East well. East Chicago is like a, the, the next city over from Gary, Indiana, uh, which I spent most of my childhood days. And then I went to high school in Indianapolis at Cathedral High School. And after that, you know, everybody knows I went to the University of Kentucky, played there, and uh, played professionally for a bit. And uh, now I'm in coaching, and I'm the head, head coach at one of the most prestigious universities in the United States, Southern University. Right, right, right. I, I'm going to go back. I'm going to start at the at, at the beginning a little bit because, you know, again, um, I'm, I, I, do, I do my homework on people that I'm, I'm familiar with. Um, and so... 88 to 92, played at the University of Kentucky. Uh, 482 total assists, top five leader in assists at Kentucky. The number 11 jersey is retired. What was that like for you? Oh man, to just to have to, it's an honor to, to have your jersey retired at probably at, at the winningest college basketball program in the country. Uh, and just think of all the great players that's ever played there. Uh, and I'm considered, you know, one of them to to, to have it, to have the privilege uh, of of having his jersey uh, reign in, in in the Raptors of Rupp Arena. That that is an awesome accomplishment to have garnered a, as a player. What did you learn most about basketball as a player, being able to play at Kentucky? Well, I was fortunate to play under some of the best coaches that have ever done it. You know who's doing it right now. One's a Hall of Famer, Rick Pitino. Uh, you got Billy Donovan, you got Tubby Smith, uh, you got Ralph Willard, and you got uh, Herb Sendak. So I've been blessed uh, in my basketball career to play for some of the best and learn from some of the best that's ever done it. What was, um, now that, that you're a coach on the right side of the game, Back on the left side as a player, what are some of the differences but similarities of the game between now and today? Well, things just come full circle. You know, the things that you were learning, didn't understand at that particular time, uh, being coached uh, and how you were coached. Now you understand as a coach, you know, why Coach Patino and Billy Donovan and Tubby and Herb and, and uh, Ralph were doing and saying the things that they were saying and doing. Uh, and that's why we were successful. That's why we were you know, one of the top teams in America. And uh, I've taken that along with me, and that's what's been my success since I've been a coach. <laughs> um, I want to get this right. This is going to be year four mm -hmm. here at Southern. Mm -hmm. The from, from my research, the best – season you had as a head coach was Mississippi Valley State SWAC championship I think 16 15, 12, 11, 12 yeah 11 12, 12. Uh -huh. yeah 11 uh -huh. 12 um this is your second stint in the SWAC mm -hmm. what's the differences between you know eight nine years ago and today well um the only difference really I mean you know is just you had two different institutions but you know, the job is the same. You know, kids are different a little bit. But, uh, you know, I never had to go through a COVID situation. Or anything like that. <laughs> but uh, it's the same. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but kids are more athletic, uh, more cerebral. Um, you know, it's just 
bad timing for us a year or so ago. But other than that, you know, we're ecstatic and excited about what we're doing right now and the guys that we got and uh, our plans to get back on that run again. Um, I, I may be wrong. I think 17 wins at in the 2011-12 season, I think it was. For Mississippi Valley? Yes, yes. 17 wins in the SWAC, yeah, 17-1. Yeah. and one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, the again, we're talking differences and similarities. Mm-hmm. I'm a firm believer that the game was tougher back in the day. Um, guys are just more uh, has more access to technology to de- develop skill set now. What's your opinion on that? Well, there's more. There's more. Um individual workout guys out there now than it has been, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, kids now are really in the gym working on specific things, you know. And they were like that a little bit, but we're big on that too, at our, at our, as you just saw. Yeah. But um, now a lot of kids coming up now have their own individual guys. So when they're coming to you, kids are more skilled now than, than they ever were talent-wise, um, working on things that, that we didn't when we were older. We didn't have no – we just went to the park and worked on jump shots and I had no things like that. But now you have guys specifically working on specific skills, skill sets, and that's, that's, that's a major difference in what's new with, with kids today. Um, how, how do you guys handle that? Um, kids maybe for two, three, four years in high school um, go and they train with – skill developers or trainers or whatever they call themselves Mm -hmm. and now they get to Southern and they only can work out with you or do they get still get the leeway to be able to work out with their own individual trainers? On their own time we have team time and things like that you have guys that that, that do extra work and those the ones you want you know the gym rats you know I much rather a guy be in the gym as much as he possibly can, that means he loves the game of basketball. And the more guys you got like that, the better you're going to be. So, no, that's that, that's big. You know, that's letting me know that this kid is really uh, dedicated to, to, to enhance his craft as a basketball player. Given, given the opportunity to be a part of this game that uh, so many people love, um, it's, it's a game where – you have to have, and, and this again is just my personal opinion, you have to be able to do multiple thing, different things at the same time. How do you get a, a, a young kid um, fresh out of high school to comprehend that this is not high school anymore, that this is a professional entity that you're walking into? What do you say to that child? Well, everything gradually gets better. You know, it, you know, it's just every level you go to, you got to learn something different, and there's a different way. Like when you go to high school, you did it one way. Coming from middle school, now whatever you did in high school, you know that the pace changes. Guys are stronger. Right. You got to become more disciplined because you're not the most talented guy on the court anymore or on the team anymore. You got other guys that were just as good as you coming out of high school that are hungry and wants to play. Um, and it's, it's it's a process, you know. Every, you know, a freshman. That's why you call a freshman a freshman, <laughs> a sophomore a sophomore, junior a junior, and a senior a senior. Has there ever been a case? You've been at about, I think, um, memory serves me correctly. This is uh, six schools you've been at, three uh, schools as a head coach. Right, right. Mm-hmm. But total, mm-hmm. total, I think it's six. Mm-hmm. Um, have has it ever been a situation where? A freshman has came in and been the best guy on the court. Uh, he's been probably one of the most talented guys on the court, and there's a difference between talent and being the best player. You can be talented as all outdoors, but a, a veteran is going to know how to play a little bit better than, than you do as far as the nuances. He's been there, he's experienced, right. knows what the coach wants, has has experience playing in actual Division One games, and you don't. Uh, right. th- there's a process, you know, but you can't substitute talent either. You know what I mean? You just got to hone it in, though, and, and, and make that talent disciplined enough because every kid's got to get stronger. Every kid's mindset's got to be, become different. You got to become more mature uh, and know that, hey, these guys, you know, experience, you, can't, you, can't, you can't beat experience. No way in the world. Uh, right. But you can be more talented. But sometimes, as far as winning is concerned, the most experienced team kind of takes over from, uh, from, from a talented standpoint. You've never seen a team – uh, full of freshmen win a national championship, you know. So 
by 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 saying that, you know, you, you like experienced guys, but you you know you're trying to take uh, the most talented guys too because you know ta talent helps you. Right, right. This 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 past season, you guys go eight and ten um, in overall play mm -hmm. uh, here at Southern. I think it was eight and. Six Eight and six in mm -hmm. conference play. Uh, what were some of the hindrances of of having this difficult season for you guys? Well, just injuries and COVID alone. You know, we lost our top eight guys due to season ending injuries. Oh wow! Yeah, so you know, for our, you know, the, the, just holding the, the the ship in the middle, the, the car in the middle of the road, you know, what was a feat. You know, uh, you know, every other week you you don't have you, we never had our whole team. Uh, we could ever barely ever practice. You stopping and going, stopping and going. You may practice four or five days. Somebody get gets tested positive. Now you got to go into quarantine. Right. Two days later, you got to go play a game. So we never could get going, you know. And if you saw a lot of teams that normally are pretty good, weren't very good this year because you never got a grasp uh, throughout the year of, of getting a, a rhythm going. And uh, when you lose. Seven to eight guys, top guys, you know, 70, 80 percent of your scoring uh, due to COVID related injuries. You know, I'm not saying just COVID related, but stopping and going. And when you're stopping and going and you're not in great shape, and then all of a sudden you go from being in your room 14 days to two days later, you got to play a, a high octane game. Right. You know, you, you, you're susceptible to injuries, and, and uh, that, that, that bit us pretty bad this year. While, while in quarantine, um, especially for the guys that just had to be in quarantine and not be around other people. Did you guys have specific workout routines for those guys to be I mean, able to just, do in their room? You can't touch a ball. You can't run. You know what I'm saying? You got to be in shape. And if you're not in shape, it's, it's tough to do anything. And and uh, and then also when you got social distance, guys in their room, you know, they can't go out. They can't be together. Right. Things like that. It was, and, and two, to be honest with you, it, it added a disconnect. Okay. You know, because, you know, you don't have the same camaraderie. Uh, team camaraderie because after practice you got to go and then you know two days later somebody may test positive and if somebody right. tests positive now we we got to start that cycle all over again. You 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 are a guy that is big on getting it right the first time from from watching you in practice. Um, you stopped a couple of kids uh, that that may have not done it exactly the way you wanted. Re-explained it and gave them another opportunity to do the drill again. How big is skill development in Southern basketball? Oh, it's huge. You know, you, you got to get guys skilled enough to go play the game. They, they, they're the ones who got to go out there and make a play. You know, you can have all the X's and O's, but you got to have Jim and Joe's to be successful. <laughs> and uh, you want your Jim and Joe's to be as skilled as possible by doing repetition stuff and doing it the right way. I always ask this question because I, I like to know where coaches, you know, we, we all learn from somebody. Mm -hmm. um, I was a big, I'm, I'm, you know, even in his passing, I still go back and I, I watch footage of Stuart Scott. Mm -hmm. um, he is my guy. Mm -hmm. He's my go-to guy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I learned from him. Mm -hmm. um, who is your go-to guy? I have plenty. I've been, I'm blessed, man, that I can pick up the phone and call certain guys who's been in this profession or the veterans about any and every little thing because every day is different, you know, and you want to ask an experienced guy how you handle this, how you handle that. You show me a coach thinks he knows everything, I'll show you a coach that's highly not successful. So, you know, you <laughs> learn from everybody. Everybody does a different way to do everything, and you can learn something new from somebody uh, all the time. And, uh, you know, I try to do that as much as I possibly can. Man, let's 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 get to this point right here, man. Cause you know, um, I'm I'm big on on recruit Louisiana. Mm -hmm. um, I rep the boot. Mm -hmm. um, this year, you go out and you get the Tavius Gabriel from St. Martinville, and you get uh, Gavin Harris from Walker. Mm -hmm. um, how big of a step was that for you? It was huge, huge. Uh, we're very fortunate, very happy to have both of those kids. Uh, both of them are highly talented kids coming out of high school. Um, and I, I think for Southern University to, to get those type of kids is, is big for us and lets you know where we're going. And 
Nobody's too big for Southern University. Southern University is just as important as any other school in the United States. And uh, we have just as much pride and just as much uh, uh, past as, uh, as any other school in the country. Right. So uh, why not Southern University? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, why not uh, Southern? And, 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 and we're creating a culture around here that's second to none, that basketball is it. Uh, it's big here, and, uh, and it always has been big here. You know what I mean? I, I thought, you know, you, you go back to, you know, Ben Joe, you know. Then, you know, the last major step was, was, was Coach Roman Banks and, and now me. And uh, it just it keeps on going, keeps on going. And you got to make it attractive. And right. I think we're doing a great job of doing that. And I think we're heading in the right direction to not just get the top two players in the state this year. That's going to be something that we're going to try to do every year. Right. What What was some of the things that you saw from Gabriel and Harris that really attracted you t to them and what they could possibly do here for Southern? Well, both of them are high ma highly talented, you know, high major guys. You know what I mean? They're, they're really good basketball players. We're with the only ones who like Gabriel, Gabriel or, or, or Gavin. You know what I mean? Right. It just they fell in love with us too. Right. And sometimes every it doesn't have to be big anymore. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to go to the school that has the, the brightest lights. Right. You know, or the or, or all the bells and whistles. Because at the end of the day, there were 1,600 transfers, and they coming from all over, you know what I'm saying, all, all levels. So you got high major guys who witnessed and, and lived the high major situation, all the bells and whistles, right. you know, who's like, it ain't it ain't all what it's cracked up to be. It's about relationships, having an opportunity. Right. And then you have guys that want to go to the bells and whistles who had a significant, I mean, had a decent, you know, season or two at the low major situation and want to try the high major situation. So it's it, 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 it's, it's just a different day now, but uh, we're fortunate to, to have both of those kids, and we're looking forward to it. And I'll tell you what, the future is very, very bright here at Southern University you, basketball. You, you lost a few guys um, right after your season ended, mm -hmm. and we're not going to focus on them. Right. I, I want to focus on some of the other kids that you brought in that's going to make uh, – Southern basketball possible swag champions. Not only that, but it, in in order to get notoriety and recognition, you have to be able to put butts in seats. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say one name, and you give because um, he's a kid I took interest in. I'm I'm not going to lie mm -hmm. about that. Um, Ty Lyons, and just tell us about um, some of the other. Uh, Ty, but a couple of other kids that you brought in as well. Well, Ty Lyons is actually he's a transfer from North Carolina a t Had a, a great two, three-year stint there. They won, He won two conference championships. Uh, he's a very versatile guy. He's a high-level guy. Ty Lyons can play anywhere in the country, not just at this level. <laughs> you know, I thought North Carolina a t got a steal with him coming out of high school. Right. You know, nobody knew about him. He's a kid from New York City. Uh, they got, you know, just got caught in the shuffle. And they got a they, they got a good one, and he he proved it. And right. uh, we're fortunate enough to have an opportunity to have him for the next two years, to, you know, to, to, to get us to that level uh, right. again. Uh, because you get you want winners, you want guys. Coaches want guys that's won. You know, it's, they already have a winning mentality. Right. You know, you don't want a guy. He may lead the team in scoring, but he comes from a bad team, so right. he has bad habits. Right. You know what I mean? So we're Ty, Ty Lyons is one of the most versatile. Uh, six eight guys in the United States, yeah. not just in the not just in, in in our league or the MEAC, and uh, we're very fortunate to have him. And, and I'm telling everybody who, who's listening right now, remember that name. Right, right. Um, I, I think the thing that stood out to me about him most was that he was all bought in, no matter whether it was the dribble series drills or transition drills or defensive drills, whatever it was you guys were doing, he was totally locked in. But then he shot the ball when you, well when you got to shooting drills. Um, you know, again, I, and I told you this earlier, it's not very often that you see guys 6'9", 6'10", that can shoot the three ball real efficient. And he was pretty efficient in drills today. No doubt about it, and he loves playing. He's got a real quiet de demeanor. He, remind, he reminds you of Brandon Ingram, who plays for the Pelicans right now. Right. Um, very smooth kid, not a rah-rah guy, 
but he has a heck of a motor on the court, flies around, he's super athletic, can handle like a guard, can play multiple positions, and can shoot it like a guard too, and he's a lefty. So right. he's going to be a great addition, and people are going to love watching him. Um, t- tell us about, uh, I know you mentioned you got a, a PG from Colorado State. Mm-hmm. Tell us about him and, a, and one more other kid that transferred in that is, uh, you're looking forward to be a big part of what you guys are going to do here this year. P.J. Burrs, uh, we got another steal, uh, transferred from Colorado State by way of Virginia, VCU, uh, has a lot of experience at the high major level, um, was, always was a backup, but played significant minutes, and he was hungry in this transfer pool. We were able to find him and, uh, and, uh, and get him here. As it brings a lot of experience, toughness, and uh, comes from a winning culture. Uh, and as, 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 you, as your playmaker, you know, you want that. And he's got toughness. He's a leader. He can shoot the ball, can score, but he knows how to make the right play. And uh, we don't know the, the significance of Jaden Sally right now. We may not have him. Uh, so we had to bring in a veteran guy with our younger guards to make sure we, that, that position was solidified. Right. Um, I, I'd be doing you a disservice if we didn't talk about um, the swag and some of your favorite opponents, and what you learn, what you've learned each year about the guys you compete against as coaches and as well as players. I tell you what, the swag has is, is, is changed a little bit. The dynamics has changed since the last time I was in it. Um, you know, it's always had great coaches. You know, I think they got some great, great coaches again. You got some veteran coaches, or you got some guys that's that's played at high levels. You know, you got Johnny Jones, who's been a who's a veteran coach, who's coached right. at the high level. Mike Davis just left, who you know, who coached in the Final Four. You know, um, you got my 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 former assistant, who's who's been with me ever since I've been a head coach, and Dylan Howard over to Alabama A and M. You got Jackson State, who's coming along, who Brent is a, is a, is an excellent and, and veteran coach. Uh, you got Byron over at, at Prairie View who's been around for a while, and, and he's finally, you know, after a few years, you know, got it going the way he wants to. So those, you know, it, it, it's it's back. You know, the swag is exciting. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to, to, to get back to the top again. I think we're <laughs> heading in the right direction, especially with the team we got this year. Uh, some of your favorite uh, teams that you like to compete against in the swag that – you know, I know as a coach that you're up for every game, mm-hmm. but I also know as a coach though that it's some games that that light your fire a little more than others. Um, well, you want to talk about your rivalry games, then you want to talk about Grambling. Okay. You know, you want to talk about Jackson State. You want to talk about now Prairie View and Texas Southern because they've been the epitome of the league for a little bit. Uh, so th- those get your, your, your but get get your blood boiling <laughs> because it's a you know it's like Kentucky playing against. Louisville, or, right. you know what I'm saying, things like that. So the good thing is there's tradition. And now you can go in that locker room and you can motivate your guys and say, we play at Jackson State. We can't lose against Jackson State. We're playing against Gramlin. Can't lose against Gramlin. Um, everybody's talking about Texas Southern and Prairie View. You know, you, we got to go smack them, you know. So every game is important, and every game brings a significant type of rivalry uh, taste to it. You, you brought up tradition, and since you have, let's talk about tradition. Um, I think it was Coach Job. Um, he he was well loved here at Southern, and from you know, from my talking to Southern guys, the the arena was always packed. Mm-hmm. How do you get back there? Creating an exciting atmosphere. Uh, I thought we were heading in the direction before COVID. I mean, we were starting to, you know, it, uh, our attendance was raising. Students were coming to the games. We were fun to watch. Uh, I think it's going to come back now because everybody, you know, COVID kind of made everything dead. Now right. I think people are going, even with football, I think now people have been inside so much, they're excited about not getting back to normal. And, you know, every sport here at Southern University is, is, is top of the line. And uh, and it's exciting to, to you know to, to watch, and I think we're we're going to get back to it, and I think we're going to get back to it sooner than later. Uh, he's not a part of the basketball world of the swag, but definitely a part of the football world. Um, Deion Sanders um, at Jackson State, mm-hmm. he's he's trying to bring mainstream media to the swag. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's good. You know, I think that he, he he's creating a buzz. 
Swack has always been good at every yes. sport. You know what I'm saying? You got pros come out of this league. Oh, not, not just pros, a lot of pros. Yes, and so all he's doing now is, 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 is creating a significant impact and a significant attraction for what's already been here. You know, right. and uh, now people are going to see because, you know, especially in basketball, we're getting more games on ESPN every Monday night. Right. Uh, our commissioner, Charles, Charles McClellan, has done a good job of getting that back, you know, and now people are seeing, you know, the football has always been good. Now these coaches are going to start getting more notoriety because of the publicity that's starting to happen. And uh, I don't see this league doing nothing but going, uh, going up and up uh, from here on out. How, how how do you um uh, again the the biggest thing I think in in creating a buzz is I'm I'm trying to think of the right word here um Imagination, mm -hmm. um, the imagination of coming to a, a game here at Southern. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're gonna feel the the pageantry, the pride, uh, and 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 also the the uh, what do I want to say. You know, the culture here is it, really really good. You know, and uh, you know, I tell you what, I tell people all the time. <laughs> everywhere we go, you see Southern people. You know, I don't care where we play at. Southern alumni is all over the country. Yes. And they're very prideful about their athletics. Yes. And that's what separates Southern from a lot of schools. You know, um, they do have high expectations, which is good. You don't want to go to a place that doesn't have high expectations. That means that place doesn't, you know, don't put a significant uh, impact or, or energy into your athletics. And also, athletics is the front porch of, of any university. And, uh, you know, it gets more publicity, more everything. And... And um, I, I think that's what people don't realize when they come. I was on a, on a call with, with Jeff Goodman, and uh, we told him, point blank, he was asking the same thing, why doesn't SWAC coaches or players get the notoriety? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And my thing is, people like him need to come down here and see the excitement and the passion and the enthusiasm at these basketball games. I, I agree. Uh, the, the SWAC has... You know, I have several family members that not only went to Grambling, but I have cousins that finished law school from here, medical school from here. Mm -hmm. um, the swag has always been great. And I tell you what, not, not, not bragging on Southern because I'm here, but Southern has everything. You know, you got one of the best law schools in the country. You know what I mean? You got one of the best engineering schools in the country. You got one of the best nursing schools in the country. You know, and athletics is second to none. Education here at Southern University is second to none. We, we're, we're not second to anybody in, in pretty much any category when you consider, you know, uh, any major, compared to any major university. You know, so, you know, we got to get out of the, the stigma of being an HBCU instead of saying, you know, and people giving us credit to say, this is a great university to go to, to go to. And it's, got everything in, in its top in line with everything from top to bottom uh, as far as academics, socially, social, uh, uh, socially, and also athletically. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a tall stand to, to build your, your uh, frame on. Like, again, when, when the academics are good, that means that you're getting good kids that under, understand and comprehend what you want to do on the court or on the football field, on the volleyball court. Um, you know, shout out to Coach Vanessa Jacobs. Shout out to Coach Carlos, uh, Southern Girls. Uh, shout out to Coach uh, Roman Banks, man, AD here at Southern. Um, shout out to you, Coach Woods, and your staff um, for inviting me into your house today. Um, and allowing me to be a part of your practice. I really enjoyed it. Um, any final thoughts? No, we're just ready to get going, man. I'm so happy that COVID's over with, and, and, <laughs> and, and I get to work out with my guys. You know, last year we didn't get to do that. We didn't have a summer. We didn't have a preseason. Now we do, and I'm like a kid in a candy store, man, and these guys are excited. I thought I think we got a great recruiting class, one of the best since I've been here. Uh, we're 
we got great individuals, great character guys that come from winning programs. And uh, also, you know, talking about academics, our team GPA has been over 3.0 3 pretty much ever since we've been here. So we're getting it done in the classroom uh, also. That's, that's awesome. That Now, that's a stat that you can use any day of the week. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, we here at Off the Bench Sports, we are gratefully appreciative to have been a part of today's workouts and also to be here with you, man. Um, anything that, you know, we can do to help you. You've been good since I've been here. You hey. know what I'm saying? And <laughs> I'm we've, been, trying, we've, been, man. we've been brothers since we like we like we've been knowing each other for years. So Yeah, yeah, we you, fuss a lot sometimes. That's, man. that's a good thing though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we agree to disagree, but we can move on and tell us each other we love each other. So oh, yeah. you keep doing what you're doing. Uh we're excited about what you're doing and uh you know, continue to, 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 to cover Southern athletics and uh, also cover the local talent. And also, you, you can help us sell, too, because now you know you come in here. Now you can tell a kid that's looking down at a Southern, thinking he's you know trying to you know catch the bright lights and things like that. He can get the same experience or even better here right. at Southern University than he or she can go anywhere else in the country. I, I, I definitely um, do my part. You know, again, I'm, I'm big on keeping your kids in state. Um, seem like every time we let a kid get out of state, they go and just mm -hmm. blow up. And I, I, in my heart, I'd be crying because I'd be like, "God dang it! Why, why, you know, why yeah. he isn't here at Southern right. or LSU right. or Northwestern, McNeese, Nichols, Southeastern, like Grambling? Like, let's just stay at home, son. That's so, right. That's right. Stay home. So I need you <laughs> to continue to do what you do and tell them that. You know what I'm saying? You're the one. You're the storyteller. You, you're the biggest publicity we got. You know, and and, and, and we need you to, to get that word out just as just as good as anybody else. I'm I'm gonna continue to fight the good fight, not just for high school, but for colleges alike. Um, one one can't work without the other. No doubt about it. So. Um, again, thank you, Coach Woods. It's been an honor. It's been my pleasure chopping it up with you. Um, I, I think I exceeded what I had in my mind of how long it's going to be, but that goes to show you that you can't prep for an interview. Like, exactly. Time length wise. Exactly. And, and so I've really enjoyed it. Again, thank you. Remember, get off the bench, get into the game. Go Jags.